Hello. In this video we will take a quick look at a basic aircraft instrument panel, what instruments are used, where they are placed, and how a pilot scans them whilst instrument flying. As usual, the video will contain basic information on a generic light aircraft instrument panel. The basic instrument panel will have slots for six standard instruments. They are arranged specifically to aid the pilot to instrument fly. How the layout helps instrument flying will be discussed later, but let us look at the first instrument. By far the most important instrument is the artificial horizon, often known as the attitude indicator. This instrument is described in other videos, but it is the most important instrument, because it tells the pilot which way up the aircraft is. An important piece of information, as flying in bad weather can be disorientating. Secondly, we have the airspeed indicator, which is self-explanatory. Thirdly, we have the altimeter. This gives the height above a datum, set by a pressure setting. Next, we have the direction indicator, which is positioned below the artificial horizon. These four instruments are the main instruments for flying in poor weather, or commonly known as instrument meteorological conditions. IMC for short. They are set in a T-shape, the significance of that will be discussed shortly. Two further instruments are now added. The first is the turn and slip indicator, which displays the rate of any turn, and if the aircraft is flying balanced. The second is the vertical speed indicator, which indicates whether the aircraft is climbing or descending, and at what rate. These are the usual six instruments on a basic instrument panel. During IMC, the pilot will be flying on instruments only. The six instruments on the panel will help the pilot with that task. The pilot should concentrate mainly on the artificial horizon, but will also have a scan, which involves looking at other instruments in sequence. This is where the T-shape comes into being. Firstly, the pilot will look at the altimeter, but only for a short period, and then look back at the horizon. Then the pilot will scan across to the airspeed indicator, and then back to the horizon. Then, we'll scan down to the direction indicator, and then back to the horizon. The pilot will then start the sequence again. The idea being that the pilot can check if the aircraft has moved from its desired altitude, speed, and direction, and if necessary, make corrections. The idea behind returning to the artificial horizon each time is to ensure the aircraft is still at the correct attitude correct if it isn't, and prevent being disorientated. The other two instruments then aid the pilot should any corrective measures be needed. For example, if the pilot sees the altitude is not correct, he will then go back to the horizon to adjust the attitude for correction. The pilot will then scan the vertical speed indicator to check the rate of correction, and back to the horizon scanning both the altimeter and vertical speed indicator, until the correct altitude is reached. Then, the standard scan begins again. Similarly, if the pilot finds the heading is not correct, he will make the correction to the bank angle on the horizon. Then, he will scan the turn and slip indicator, to ensure it shows a rate one turn, and back to the horizon, making any corrections to the bank angle as needed. The pilot will then scan both the direction indicator and the turn and slip indicator in turn, always returning to the horizon each time. Once the turn is complete, the readjustment to bank is made, and the standard scan continues again. During a turn though, the pilot will have to make the occasional scan of the altimeter, 
and vertical speed indicator, as a turn is more likely to create a climb or descent. Therefore a modified scan may be needed. This will continue until the correct datums are achieved. And then the pilot will revert back to the original scan pattern. That is it from us. I hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.